Good afternoon. My name's Chris Brown. I'm an analyst with Morgan's Financial. I'm here at the 14th edition of the Noosa Mining Conference, obviously in Noosa, and I'm with Kevin McNeil, the Managing Director of EQ Resources. I've known Kevin now for quite some time since he joined EQ Resources when it was trying to operate the Mount Carbine Tungsten Mine in North Queensland. Uh, a steady 55 minute drive from the hardship posting of Port Douglas. Um, Kevin, when you took it over, it was trying to reprocess tailings and, and process some low grade ore. Can you tell us where you are now and the difference in the sort of grades we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting journey. We went from a grade of 06.06% WO3 in the tailings to a 0.1 WO3 in the low grade stockpile to uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.3 in the uh, the hard rock mine currently. You've dewatered and redeveloped the uh, the hard rock mine, which had operated for about 13 years, an open pit. And can you tell us how's that going and what's the sort of production rate you're looking at? Yeah, Chris, it's, it's going, um, our first year, we had a little bit of a rough start getting into the mining and the dilution and all the things that goes with starting a new uh, open pit mine. And uh, and we learned a little bit about the geology, which is near and dear to your heart, right, as, as we went. But um, we managed to drill uh, a whole pile of RC holes on the pit floor once it was dewatered and really understood what's going on in the geology now. And it's matching up fairly well with the diamond drill holes that we had put in it, but we did get it caught a little bit on the top of the uh, deposit for the first 30, 40 meters. But uh, from here on in, it looks very solid and very rich, actually. And and Kevin, you've acquired a project. You are now the, the, the Western world's largest tungsten concentrate producer. You acquired the Soloro operation in Spain uh, about a year ago, I guess now. Can you tell us how, how that's going? Yeah, we we worked our way through. Um, we took the project on because we felt that we could um, change the recovery rate is why we took it on. They did very well in mining, whole aspect on their social, ESG, everything was running really well on that operation except the metallurgy. And we felt that that was our strengths by putting in the XRT sorters, getting the jigs right, getting the recovery rate, getting the spirals, working our way. So we've been systematically working our way through that particular project and we've managed to bring the recoveries from a 38 percent to 55 plus and I think in the next month or two stand by I think you'll see even higher recoveries coming that uh, I think we've solved a lot of the metallurgical issues there. One, one of the great breakthroughs in the in the last 15 20 years I guess um, has been the development of Tomra x-ray transmission or sorters you've been operating with Tomras now for well, well before I knew you. Um, can you give us, a, you know, how many have you got operating at Carbine? How many do you need? How many have you got at Saloro? How many do you need there? And, and are they getting better? Yeah, really interesting technology. I had a full head of hair when I started to use these. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, but anyway, no, the, uh, the technology is just amazing. So just imagine your computer in 2009 and the processing power compared to where it's at today. And that's the advancements of the sorter since the first one that I owned in 2009 to we have three at Carbine now, we have two at uh, Solaro. And what they do, Chris, is they really reduce the mass of the material, the volume of material that you need to treat at a very coarse size. So at a 40 millimeter size particle, almost this size, you're able to uh, put it through the ore sorter. And if it's got a piece of tungsten in it, even a small one, it comes out and then 90% of the waste goes past. So you only have to treat 10% of the material that goes by. So this has really changed the, the metallurgy for a lot of the uh, projects, uh, tin mines as well as tungsten mines, isn't it? Correct. Correct, yeah. And it, 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 I think it's a disruption in the industry, really. I think that's what we're looking at in the tungsten, bringing the grades lower, being able to treat lower grade dumps. Um, so I think it is a bit of a disruption into the tungsten industry. And one of the things that your work at Carbine has shown is that the, the high-grade mineralization goes to depth. Uh, previous owners started developing an underground operation there, but then the, uh, the tungsten price collapsed 
back to about a third of what it had been and they shut that down. You're, you're looking to go underground at Mount Carbine now? Yeah, you'll see in the presentation tomorrow, we've opened up the old historic decline that went down a half a kilometer into the past. So uh, we'll be dewatering that in the future, tendering to secure it and uh, looking at diamond drilling and developing the reserve uh, on, a, on, a, on a, a measured reserve basis going underground and trial mining bankable feasibility. It's the next evolution from the, the tailings, the waste rock dump, the open pit, and now the underground for the next 25, 30 years, right, is, uh, is where we're heading. Kevin, thanks very much for your, for your time and for telling us the uh, EQ resources story. Um, certainly one that I've been following for a while. Uh, and uh, there's been a lot of advance since Kevin joined the company. And as I say, technically and operationally, it looks to me like it's running now heading towards where it should be. So, Kevin, thank you very much. Thanks, Chris.